What does the average day of a high schooler look like? I think most of us would agree that it looks a little something like this. Wake up, eat, school, extracurriculars, sleep, repeat. I know, this schedule doesn't seem healthy at all, and it isn't. It promotes a rigorous academic-centered lifestyle with little room for relaxing or tending to our mental health. And for example, most of my time outside of extracurriculars is spent on homework or SAT prep, and I barely even have time to hang out with my friends or family as much as I would like. And one of my best friends spend, checks her grades eight times a day. Now, obviously, this is an extreme example, but it just goes to show how unhealthy our academic culture can be. We have been taught since elementary school that our report cards translate to our success. Because of this mentality, we as kids can't fully enjoy our youth and teenage years. We're always busy and constantly worrying about our lives 10 years from now. So today, we'll be learning about teenage stress, studying the importance of our EQs, and finally, discussing how to reach a more carpe diem mentality. In the US, our education system and our school environment in general em emphasizes the importance of academic success. And while academics are important, this emphasis tends to cause medical and emotional damage on teenagers. According to a, a study conducted by NYU in 2018, about half of the students surveyed reported having stress on a daily basis. And unfortunately, about 26% of these students reported having symptoms of depression caused by stress. Now, why are these numbers so significant? Because the main causes of this stress in teenagers are found to be grades, homework, and preparing for college. And teens often feel pressure from their teachers, classmates, and especially their parents to do well in school. In fact, teenagers are found to be more stressed than adults in a study conducted by the American Psychological Association. Massive amounts of stress at such a young age can cause chronic anxiety, and chronic stress can cause a deteriorating immune system, heart problems, respiratory problems, and even anxiety and depression. So how to deal with this, there are two ways teenagers cope with stress, active and destructive. Teenagers who actively cope with their stress often use outlets such as sports or music, and they generally manage their time well. However, on the other end of the spectrum, teenagers also use self-destructive coping mechanisms to help deal with their stress. This often comes in the form of exhaustion or substance abuse. Students who are overwhelmed with work, quote, won't do any of it or lose the ability to function, end quote. And sadly, students often turn to drugs and alcohol to relieve some of their stress. In the same NYU study, about 34% of the students reported being high in the last month, and 38% of students reported being drunk in the last month as a way to relax after immense amounts of work and pressure in the school setting. So how do we find a good balance between work and life? Ideally, the learning environment as a whole would shift towards being less competitive, but the college admissions process is only becoming more competitive. However, there are things that our schools can start to do right now. Here at Unionville, we have testing schedules where certain subjects are only allowed to test on certain days. And this method is really effective because for the most part, teachers do stick to their testing schedules and students aren't crammed with four or five exams on the same day. Additionally, schools can, additionally, teachers can try to reduce the amount of homework they give each night because although homework is necessary for retaining the information taught in class, a lot of it is also just busy work that's not really necessary for learning the material. And finally, schools can start to use standing desks or comfortable chairs to create a more calming atmosphere for students because sitting for 45 minutes, eight periods every single day 
is ironically exhausting. Like I said, one of the rising causes of stress levels in teenagers is the constant competition in school and the pre-existing notion that grades define success. When I was younger, and even until I wrote this speech and did research, I always thought that the smartest people were going to go the farthest in life. I often surround, found myself surrounded by very intelligent people, yet I always felt like I would never be as good as they are. However, I quickly realized that I was wrong. Having a high IQ might be helpful, but when it comes to climbing the corporate ladder and securing those top jobs, an EQ is much more valuable. Now, we all know what an IQ is. It's basically your intelligence. So what is an EQ? An EQ is your emotional quotient. In other words, your capacity to recognize your own emotions as well as others and apply that to your thinking. The reason why an EQ is so important is because while having a high IQ is valuable, a person's people skills is what matters more because connections are built through kind and thoughtful human interactions. According to Forbes in 2018, while IQ might be largely determined by genetics, an EQ can be learned, developed, and refined. Therefore, an EQ is accessible to everyone because its development is dependent on one's own attitude. Anyone can increase their EQ if they gear their mindset towards self-improvement. This often comes in the form of thinking before you speak, reflecting on your own emotions and learning from your past mistakes or failures. Now that we've got all of the basics, I would like to share with you all my mindset as a high schooler who is just trying her best to stop worrying so much about school. I'm still trying to embrace this. The keyword here is trying, so just stick with me. I encourage you all to just listen to this and just think about it. Maybe you'll like it. It's basically just an extended version of YOLO. High school is just a time of our lives that's meant to be fun. It's meant to give us a couple of years before we're thrown into the world of college, taxes, and finding an actual job. So for me, I try my best to remind myself that it's okay to have fun and that getting a bad grade is definitely not the end of the world. I still stay up until 2 a.m. sometimes doing homework, and I still check my grades frequently, but I'm trying. So, because in 10 years, I'm not going to remember the grade I got on this test or my SAT score, but I will remember all of the memories I made with the people I love and care about. Thank you.